Well, good evening, guys. You know, what a privilege and uh, what a blessing to see all of you again on this platform. And yeah, we we just um, are so, so thankful and um, so blessed that we can share whatever the Lord has laid on our hearts, you know. And uh, I can just perhaps just continue and share with you, you know, this last few weeks has been uh, is taking its toll on, on all of us. There's so many things that happened in, in and around us. And even on with our men's gathering on, on Friday, we experienced it, you know, that a lot of people are taking strain. A lot of people has been uh, confronted with, with a lot of things. Even IT just received a mail that they overmarked the teachers now for the vaccine. And uh, we all know that there's so many, there's so many information and so many discrepancies and um, stuff flying around all over social media. And um, this, this all forms part of what I want to share about tonight, you know. The first thing is, I just realized that the Lord says in uh, 2 Corinthians 1, it says that we will, that we will experience the sufferings of Christ. You know, one of the baptisms that took place is that we were baptized in, into Christ's suffering. And I just realized, you know, that often we find it, and I, I found it again on Thursday evening while I was sitting with people that we are you now journey with, you know, the preparation into to marriage, the marriage counseling. And I just find that there's still this, this perception with people with a perfect church, perfect Christians, that you're not, you're not allowed to suffer. Then I asked this question, but the Lord says we will be baptized into his suffering, you know. So, so what do we do with that? You know, because he says, even if there's suffering, where suffering increases, my comfort will increase. Because you need to know that, you know, the kingdom principle remains that we will comfort with the same comfort that we were comforted with. This is the effect of what's happening with us. You know, I find that we are more and more isolated. And the more people become isolated, the more they are prone to depression and, and certain things that happens to them. You know, they're not able to soundboard with people that's going through the same troubles. You know, where the kingdom functionality, the body ministry is excluded or eliminated. Uh, I mean, we were confronted with suicide. It's people that is really, their resume speaks of a lot of success. And my question is, and I've been quieted myself and just said, Lord, you, you need to help us. You know, this is why we received the Holy Spirit, you know, the inward living of the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. And um, it took me to 2 Corinthians 4, and I just want to share this with you. Well, I'm going to read it from, from verse 1. It says, the light of Christ's gospel. It says, therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame. Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. We do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and, our, and yourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard-pressed on every side yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, 
that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal bodies. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, the grace having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Now, this is very important. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And you know, um, Friday morning we spoke about, in Exodus 1, there's a new Pharaoh that rose. The old Pharaoh passed away, but also Joseph passed away. What happened within that relationship was now, of the past. So when the new Pharaoh rose, he looked at the Israelites, he looked at God's promised nation, and he saw something in them. He saw this, uh, the following. He says, look at them, how powerful and mighty and fruitful they became. Yet in their own eyes, they were like worms. But the king recognizes this thing. He says, they lost their identity. They're calling out to God for saving them out of Egypt. Yet they had the strength and the power within themselves, within their own reach. And they did not recognize it. And I just thought, you know, perhaps we find ourselves in a similar position in the New Testament. As children of God, we allow certain things because... We do not look at the unseen, but we look at the seen. We yield to, the, to our circumstances. We yield to the knowledge that is presented to us. And we do not listen to the inward power, the inward working of the Holy Spirit. God has given us his spirit, not just to direct us and to correct us, but also to encourage us. And I found that sometimes that, that third that third very important ingredient which the Holy Spirit has come to, to share with us is being neglected. And it could be because of many reasons. It could be a, a lack of intimacy. It could be a lack of identity. It could be a lack of liberty, you know, because the first thing in this portion of Scripture, Paul writes, he says, the first thing that we dealt with is the shame. We dealt, we dealt with the shame and the hidden things that distract us. So he, he purified his heart. He, he positioned himself in the identity to know that God has positioned me within this relationship and I can rely on him. Therefore, I remember that I walked in darkness, but now the light of the gospel has shone in my heart and this gave me a new perspective on life. He says, although we are persecuted, although we are struck down, he says, yet I know this, there's a power working in me. And I, I ask this question, you know, because the power that's working in, in any and all of us needs to be manifested so that we can then comfort with the same comfort that which we are comforted with. And because of this isolation, because of COVID, because of many things, we are deprived of this. Yet we take it in the stride. I mean, children of God is perishing all, all over and around us. I mean, Henny, Henny is now on, he's just on audio, but I mean, they were confronted uh, last week to continue working their, their contract. They need now to be vaccinated. If they don't do that, they will not be allowed on the premises. So it's not just the government enforcing these things, 
they're enforcing it through the companies. It's the same with the Department of Education. So what is the next thing? You know, three months ago, I said it this morning, three months ago, the president stood on, on the platform and he says, my fellow South Africans and citizens, you will never be enforced to take the, the vaccination. You will not be restricted to, to travel. And all those promises, three months down the line, the last effort on national TV was 95% just a vaccination. And I don't want to, to enforce or to share what you should do. All I'm asking is, you know, are we relying on the Holy Spirit of God who knows all things? And he says, we have received the anointing that will teach us all things. Do we really rely on the inward working of the Holy Spirit to guide us where we as fellow brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of the Most High, rise up and start sharing what God has shared with us. And within that, we know this is from God. We rise up and we make a stand. Otherwise, we will be confronted in somehow, some way, uh, whether, it's a, whether it's the mark of the beast or not. I don't care. I just, I just want one thing I, I want to hear from God. At this point in moment in time, I just really want to position myself that I will hear what, what they say. But if I want peace, and if I want truth, and if I want the resurrection power of God to, to operate in my life, I need to spend it and find it in Christ Jesus. There's no else. God is not going to raise up another Moses. Andre said it. God is not going to raise up another Mo Moses to lead us out. Jesus was the finished work. He is the complete work. He is sufficient for us all. Therefore, it will not work through another man. It will work either through the, the power of the Holy Spirit, through the body of Christ. I'm totally convinced of that. And I'm open for correction, but, but I just believe this is, this is how it's going to work. We need to step into the flow which the Holy Spirit is leading us in. And I find that, that people are tossed to and fro, and, and I was one of them. You know, the past two weeks just caught up with me on Wednesday. I had to, to go to a place where I just relied on and in, in, in a new way. I mean, I've been doing this for a while. If I'm not at a good place, I know how to soak. I know how to become quiet before God. I know how to worship, take out my guitar. But this time around, I really just had to listen, carefully, carefully listen to God. And how the Holy Spirit came and he, he picked me up. And if we are not going to position ourselves in similar ways, and we had a few weeks ago, we had that, that platform where we asked the question, it says, how do you do it? And each and every one of us, God deals with us in, in a very significant way, in a very individual way, because you are important to him. You are valuable to him. You are you are his greatest treasure. And God does not want us to perish under the scene and uh, uh, at the hands of the God of this world. In the age of darkness, he does not want us to perish under that, under that influence. So I was reminded about the falling, and I read this. I just want to share this with you again in the Passion Translation. And it's a very well-known portion of scripture and I hope this will encourage you as, as it encourages encouraged me um, while I was reading this this is Psalm 23 it says Yahweh is my best friend and my shepherd I always have more than enough he offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love he tracks take me to an oasis of peace near the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me the right path and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me for you already have. 
Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely, for you are near. You come my delicious fe feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of the Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my cup overflows. So why would I fear the future? Only goodness and tender love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. And this is where the reality, you know, at John's funeral, I shared that portion of scripture in, in Romans 8, verse 38 to 39. It says, therefore, no future thing, no created thing, no principalities, powers, or ears, no death, no life can separate me from the love of God. And I, I was reminded this yesterday afternoon while I was just sitting and thinking about today. And I was reminded about, you know, two years ago, the Lord gave that scripture. He just dropped the scripture in my heart. And I was pondering and thinking and meditating on it. And he's, the scripture says, in the last days, I'm going to shake the unshakable so that that which cannot be shaken will remain. And I believe what we are exposed to, what we are confronted with, and it comes from various forms. I mean, it comes from the local council. It comes from government. It comes from life itself. To just live in our environment today with, the, with costs just inflated, people are really struggling to survive. You know, even with COVID, the way we, we, we went about having church, you know, having gatherings, marriages, um, matric farewells, graduations. I saw Inc. and Erika, their daughter's graduation. You know, everything, everything is just, you know, it's uh, like it's watered down. You know, the value of this has been, been taken away. You know, we live off the scraps of life. And this is not what God intended for us. And even if it happens, you know, we need that assurance that we that full persuasion that any often speaks about that resting faith which chris often mentions you know that that within our identity within our relationship with within our intimacy with god that we will be sound and says we we heard from god we were warned by the dreams and visions we were informed and we have sound bought and we have listened to the various prophecies. We, we are now fully convinced this is God. Because we recognize his voice within this. And within the functioning of the body. Within the fivefold offices of ministry. All these things comes together. We could then be established and say. This is what God said we have to do. And this is what we're going to do. And if we need to rise, we'll rise. If we need to yield and wait, we yield and wait. But at least we know where it comes from. We're not running after each and every wind that, that flows past and, um, and yield to fear and, and all these things. So I just believe with all my heart, this has really increased tough times, perilous times are knocking at our door. And let us be encouraged not by, by false hope, but by the true hope that is founded in Christ Jesus and within our relationship. And then we test it against the word, which is the foundation of God's word. We will rely on that and we will take the future on the head on. But we will not perish because God is not in all. Talk, misschien nie wat jylle verwag het nie, maar die realiteit is, jy weet, ons, ons sien hoe die goed rondom ons gebeur. Ons sien hoe we see the impact on relationship. We see the impact on families. We see the impact on businesses. So let's be steadfast in our identity as sons and daughters. He will not leave us. He will never forsake us. Amen.